this video, we're going to talk about the eight elements of complexity management in supply chains. We are going to go through what is complexity management. We're going through the eight elements and how we define them and then how we work with complexity management. So let's get to it. What is complexity management? As you know, supply chain complexity is caused by a variety of factors, often with the result of rising customer expectations for faster lead times, expanded products and services, and tailored experiences. These factors force brand owners to support more unique orders for customers across the supply chain, requiring greater collaboration with partners, improved inventory management with suppliers, and deeper visibility and control into all supply chain steps. So what are these eight elements of complexity management? We have network complexity, process complexity, range complexity, product complexity, customer, supplier, organizational and information complexity. So let's get to them and talk about what these um, elements are. So first we have network complexity. So when we look at the network complexity, we, we talk about the more nodes and links that exist in a network, the more complex it becomes. Uh, as a result of outsourcing of non-core activities, many companies today are much more dependent on external suppliers of goods and services. Also, these external vendors also rely on ne a network of secondary vendors, which can make the network even more complex. And it goes on and on and on because these secondary vendors also have a third party, a fourth party, a fifth party. So as you can see, the network can very fast become very huge and that is very complex. In process complexity, often complexity processes have been developed at a random and have been added and modified to reflect current requirements and have become more complex as a result. Um, so to work with this process complexity, a constant review of the process structure and a consequent re-engineering are needed if this penetrating, penetrating source of supply chain completeness is to be kept to a minimum. We always want to keep complexities at a minimum because that is the way that a firm can be more responsive. So we have range. So most business organizations experiences that the range of products and services they offer to the market tends to grow rather than decrease. As more variants are added to an inter interval, the demand per variant is typically reduced with a subsequent impact on forecast accuracy. So product, so range and product goes very well together. So as we see here, the design of product can have a significant impact on the complexity of the supply chain because the decision about the choice of materials and components can directly or indirectly affect the overall life cycle cost, as well as agility and responsiveness. If you have heard about decoupling point, you would know that if you put, if you have um, a production that is a make to order, that would be a longer lead time than make to stock. And it depends on what product you have and in what range you have it. Um, so product complexity can arise because the number of components or sub-assemblies is high. That is when it is made to order example, or because there are few common features across the material pieces for different products. And the less common features 
uh, are at the bottom level, the less flexibility there is to vary product mix or volume. So we look into production processes when we look into the product and the complexity of the product. Then we have the customer. The cost of serving different customers can vary considerably because each customer will exhibit different characteristics in terms of ordering patterns. Example, frequency of orders, size of orders, delivery requirements. So from a marketing perspective, it can be beneficial to offer a range of options to customers. That way, every customer would be satisfied in their own terms. When we talk about supplier, so the size of the supplier base can increase complexity by increasing the number of relationships to be managed, as well as increasing the total transaction cost. So if you have a lot of vendors, that means higher complexity. Um, but if you have like one or two vendors, you have kept your complexity down to a minimum. But it depends on which business you are running. Maybe it's better for you to have a lot of, a lot of vendors instead of two vendors. So that, therefore you have to, there is trade-offs in the complexity. When we talk about organizationals, then most companies have traditionally organized themselves around functions and departments. And their organization has many levels and tends to be hierarchical in their structure. They tend to hamper agility because they necessarily tweak inward with a focus on efficiency, like doing the things right. How should the task be solved, they ask themselves, rather than customer facing with a focus on effectiveness like doing the right things, asking themselves which task should be solved. And at last we have information complexity. So supply chains are supposed to, are supported by the exchange of information between all the devices and levels that make up the complete end-to-end -end network. The amount of data flowing in all directions is enormous and not always accurate and can be misinterpreted. Visibility of actual supply and demand conditions can be blurred through the way information is filtered and changed as it goes from one device or level to another. I don't know if you know the little play we played when we were little in kindergarten, like we sit in a circle and one goes like uh, says uh, a tomato is red and then it has to go through the whole circle and at last the, the last child is saying oh the tomato is blue that is information complexity like from one to another the information is right and from that person to the other person the information could be misinterpreted and so on and so on so if you have an, a close network, that would necessarily not happen. But if you have a huge network, that could be a complexity error you have in your system. So how to work with this complexity? So complexity can ruin a lot, as we have learned now. And if ignored, it can over time completely undermine a company's ability to develop new products, deliver on time, the lead time is very important, and do good business. So dealing with complexity and keeping it in check is therefore an important task for any businesses. In order to deal with a growing complexity, it is necessary to create an overview through a thorough complexity analysis. So the overview must illustrate the connection between the different customer requirements and the variance in the company's value chain. The components and product concepts and the production equipment that are clearly driven by customer requirements are value creating, as you might know. 
the remaining posts are non-value adding and should be removed or limited to keep the complexity at a low level. So now you know the rules of how to work with complexity, you know what complexity is and you know how to define the eight elements. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, give me a like and comment down below if I if you have any questions or if you have suggestions on another video. Thank you.